Hello, 4 o'clock class. Mike Amore, spring 2019, first update. I'm actually going to show you guys a game that you played in uh, the Simo when Rusa was there. And she did an incredible job going 14-0 and 0 with clocks ticking. That's really an incredible feat. I want to show you her game with Rohan, which was terrific. And there were several, several games that were really well played. Fred played a really good game. I know Ivan did as well. And I haven't gotten through every single game yet, but the ones that I looked at, you guys played really well against her. Uh, let's take a look at this game and, and get into the mind a little bit of what happens when you have to play 14 people at once. And in a simul, sometimes what people do, the, the player that's doing the simul, will sometimes open a game with an offbeat opening. So Rusa opened with Rohan against with, with B3. Okay, so with B3, and it's a, certainly a playable move, she's basically telling Rohan, let me see what you're going to do. You're not going to play anything out of your book. And I kind of know how to get positions I'm familiar with, even though I'm starting with B3. So Rohan plays the move D5. Why not? He puts a pawn in the middle. And Rusa plays a rare move. She plays C4 on move two. And it's not in the books. I mean, it, it is. You'll see Masters playing this, but it's not the main line. And mainly because black can already on move two put a pawn on d4 and sometimes these pawns are a little annoying trying to get out of the middle and it, so in general white will uh, try to avoid having black get this much space but um you know again certainly playable rohan plays knight f6 and here the players start bringing out the pieces without the armies really making contact there is a little bit of tension here in the middle Pawn g6, and this is where the the game starts to heat up as early as move four because you can see that both players are going to be in shadow. And when you have two bishops on the same long diagonal, you always have to watch out for tactics. So, um, you know, she's played these positions before, so Rohan really needed to be careful. Why not bishop b2 to cover the diagonal? And clearly black is going to do the same on their long diagonal. Pawn e3. Not in a rush to take in the center. Opening up the bishop. Castling the king. Good move by Rohan. c5. Attacking the center. Rusa takes. Rohan takes. And she's happy because she's gaining a tempo with knight c3. And he's happy because when he goes away, you know, it's the kind of position where, you know, what is she really doing to him yet? It appears that he's really behind in development. But if you guys take a real close look at this, not so bad. Here's one of the reasons why. Look at the highlights. There's nothing on the fourth rank. And in chess, when you see positions with no pieces or pawns on the fourth rank, and remember, that could be for black as well. That would be this line here that I'm toggling. A lot of times when there's no contact on a, a full rank like that, it's very hard to play the position. There are no pawns in contact, no pieces in direct contact. Even the bishops here, they know they're there. You kind of guys get the feeling that these bishops are putting pressure on each other even though the knights are there. But because Rusa's left that fourth rank open, she's giving Rohan a lot of room to maneuver. She's also giving him <laughs> a lot of rope. And <laughs> you, I think you know what that means. She's basically telling him, look, put your pieces on good squares if you can find them. But I'm hoping the more opportunities I give you, the better chance that you're going to mess up. So bishop to e2. Still quiet, castle, castle, knight b to d7. Rohan moves the knight to d7 to keep the c6 square open. Why? Why would he want to keep this knight, uh, this square open? Try to think about where this light squared bishop is going to go. And you'll see that he really played a good game here. Rusa played rook c1. Pretty clear. Look at the, look at the lines. She's putting the rook on the open, uh, or at least a, um, a file that's half open. She also has, from her memory of playing similar structures, 
there is the possibility someday that this bishop will tuck itself in on a1, which is something that she did. And that, that's another reason to vacate this square, because sometimes you'll see players move a bishop to a1. You'll see the queen lift slide in here and create a deadly barrier on this line. That's just one idea. So clearly with the rook on c1, she has that opportunity if, if, uh, if it comes up. It's also just on a terrific square. I mean, you know, again, I'll show you the files open. Now, why this arrow and why this square? The d4 square in this position is where the d pawn is going to break. And if she can break that and keep this line open, then, of course, the future of that bishop looks really, really good. Okay? So Rohan, after rook c1, what was his idea? And I really like this game because the players were very consistent. And I mean, especially Rusa. I mean, she has 14 clocks going at the same time. Um, so I was very, very impressed with her play. So she puts the rook on the open file. He had just played knight to d7. Remember this move? So what I liked is the players were very, very consistent. She played rook c1, and now he plays b6. His idea is simple. I'm putting the knight on d7 so I can keep this diagonal open. Remember the highlights I showed you after Rusa's move, rook c1. What were the two reasons? One, in case the bishop wants to tuck itself in to make that battery. Two, to possibly play the move d4. Well, let's look again. Here's Rohan's last move, b6. Does it stop Rusa's idea of playing d4? The answer, no. And I'll put this in the blog. When you have a plan, there are only three reasons why you do not follow through with your plan. One, your opponent does something, like creates a threat. If that threat is stronger than the move you're about to play, then obviously you can't follow through with your plan. You can't. Here's a second reason. While you're thinking, let's say it's your opponent's turn and you have a plan, you just played A and you're about to play B. Sometimes during that thought or during that think, as they say, you realize your plan stinks. Oh man, there's a problem with your plan. You just caught it. So guess what? When it's your turn to move, you don't follow through with your plan. And the third reason that players are not consistent is very often time pressure. When you're playing in Norwalk, for example, and you have two minutes on your clock, planning tends to kind of take a back seat to direct play and tactics because there's no time to put moves together. So if you find yourself playing a move and not following through in time pressure, you're excused. Okay, so make sure you remember those three ideas. So Roos's move again, consistency, d4. Rohan, consistent, bishop to b7. Position is nice and level. I actually saw a game between two 2500s from this position, uh, which was real impressive to see. Uh, so here, if you go back to d4, some of you may be asking, why not take in the center? And you can. The problem is, if you take there right away, Rus is most likely going to take with the knight. I don't think she'd be comfortable putting her queen on the same line as that bishop. And if she takes with the pawn, then she has an isolated queen's pawn. And she knows from experience that when you have an IQP, some of her pieces down here are on funny squares. You very often see the dark squared bishop, not on this diagonal, but very often either here, protecting the weak pawn, or playing moves like uh, bishop to g5 trying to remove the defender of the d5 square sometimes the bishop can come in here and trade itself off um, you'll also see this light squared bishop very often on this diagonal threatening to create a battery here or sometimes on the square b3 kind of peering into black's territory creating tactics over here so her pieces are kind of on funny squares to take an iqp so i'm pretty sure she would have taken with the knight but that's not what rohan did rohan put his bishop on b7 and here i think rusa this is a hard position to play she played the move h3 and in simul sometimes notice she's keeping the tension in the middle 
trying to get Rohan to bite first. And then, you know, h3 is a useful move. Maybe the king has an escape square. Rohan's turn, rook to c8. Beautiful. Why not? You know, just put the rook on the file that could open up. It's already half open for white, so why not put the rook there? All consistent moves. Bishop a1. There's that little maneuver I told you about. So again, it, it, when you're a, such a strong master, I mean, she's an international master, and you have these little maneuvers in the back of your mind, you can save a lot of time. So this looks like perhaps she's just playing a waiting move. It is, but at the same time, she has that idea of maybe, maybe, maybe setting up a battery on that line. And here, Rohan decides to eliminate one of his knights because here, they're stepping on each other's toes. And you'll hear that in the book, so you'll read that. When knights are kind of protecting each other, but they're also sitting on squares that the other might want to move to. So Ron, uh, Rohan does a nice job of trying to get rid of a pair of knights. Rusa makes the trade, bishop takes. Pawn takes on c5. Why? Because that exposes the queen to the bishop. Knight takes c5 so the queen can protect. Off come the bishops up on g7. King takes and Rusa gives a check. The reason for the check is because once Rohan moves out of check, the queen swings over to h4. And this is a critical moment in this game. The move that Rohan played was e6 in this position. So he's setting up this very solid structure of light pawns. And he kind of missed Rusa's idea that the knight was coming into g5. Or maybe he didn't miss it, but he figured he'd be able to defend with this move. If the knight gets to g5, I'm going to set up, turn a lot of lights on. You guys ready? Oh my god, look at that. Ah, What I highlighted there is a 5x5 five five box. This is not an exact science, but over the years studying this silly game, I have found that queen and knight inside a 5x5 five five box could it be six by six? Of course, in some situations. But remember, the knight is not a long range piece. But within this five by five box, the queen and knight can play every attacking move. They are a deadly combination. So whenever you see queen and knight inside a zone like this, you have to be incredibly careful. So you can already see with the knight on g5, it's threatening made up uh, here on h7. Now let's go back. Critical moment in the game after queen h4. This is possibly a time when you would give up a bishop for a knight. Now this is not an easy move to play because the bishop on d5 is well placed, right? This is a very strong piece. And you know, after Rohan's e6, he's kind of cementing the bishop there. So we can't really blame him for the move. It looks really good. But the question would be, if the knight wants to come to g5, like Rusa played, would it be appropriate in this position to trade bishop for knight? Clearly, well, I shouldn't say clearly, but I'm pretty sure that she would take back with the bishop to keep the structure near the king. And it turns out in this position that if now you play e6, you're offering a queen trade. And I'm not sure that Rusa would trade the queens, but if the queens came off the board, you would have this position where this pawn formation up here, these little pawns are acting like mini bishops to fight the light squares here. And this knight is pretty well placed on c5. This is not an easy game to win. Um, this is pretty flat. I mean, I think there's chances for both sides. And normally they say when there's pawns on both sides, it may benefit the bishop over the knight, but not always if there's rooks on the board. And here clearly Rohan is fighting for the open files. I think she would have a hard time putting him away from this position. Uh, of course, we don't know what the time situation. Uh, I think Rohan got into time pressure. So I think he should have went for that trade. But instead, he played e6 and let the knight in. And from here, we had a flurry of tactics. h5 to stop the mate and Rusa sacks. 
Uh, Rohan probably shouldn't accept the sacrifice, maybe play a move like King G7 and try to hold on, but he accepted. Rusa takes the pawn, so now she's got a uh, second pawn and a mate threat. Bishop E4, covering H7 and G6, and here um, Rusa played the move Rook F to D1, but um, she may have missed a chance to, um, to win a little faster. All forced take the bishop. Knight takes back, and now queen g4 hitting knight uh, and king. The only way to save the knight is knight g5, and then a simple deflection, just take the rook, and uh, queen has to take, and then you take the knight up here with a check, and you'll see that um, uh, she is up two pawns, and she has the plan of sliding the rook over to d8, up to d4, and causing a lot of trouble. I think Rohan uh, would be uh, busted in this position. All right, so just check out the tactic again. Really well played. I mean, I love going over this game. I thought, I thought this was fantastic to study. So uh, it's in this position where Rusa should probably just take the bishop and uh, get on with it. What she did is she played rook f to d1, and rook f to d1 hits his queen. But Rohan retreats the bishop to counterattack uh, the queen. And here, you know, Rusa could probably go for that trade, you know, trade everything off here, trade a pair of rooks and get this position. But you'll see she's really getting back into the game here because the, of the pin on this line and just kick the knight. And um, she's going to be up a couple of pawns and um, looks pretty good, right? Okay, watch this. So bishop to g6, she plays queen g4. And, you know, her idea is maybe marching the h-pawn, setting up some discovered check, getting off the line so she can move the knight without the queens coming off. And Rohan finds a really good move. He finds queen f6. And queen f6 brings the queen in this area to protect, but at the same time sets up a little bit of a tactic, as you'll see in a moment. h4, consistent. Queen f5. And after queen f5, um, oh, sorry, sorry, after h4, Rohan missed a, a nice little move here. And he has knight to d3. And after knight to d3, there are a lot of threats. The knight is attacking f2. The rooks are facing off with each other. And here, black has a clear advantage. Um, I think Rusa would have had her hands full had he found the move knight to d3. Um, not so easy to respond to this move. Um, if you trade rooks, the rooks come off and not so easy to play. You know, if you continue with that h5 idea, knight takes f2, hits the queen and rook, and I don't know, black's got a lot of play. Uh, but what happened, he didn't find it. He tried to get the queens off. Uh, Rusa said no. He moved his king up. Here comes the h5 move. Bishop took, and I think he was in time pressure, but she finds knight takes e6, double check. And he can actually survive this if he would have found maybe king f6. There may have been some drawing chances or some hope in the position, but unfortunately in time pressure he played king h6, and I think you guys could see the rest from here. Checkmate, all right? Pretty long video. There's going to be a lot of written... Um, ideas about the game in the blog but you know if you want to watch it in two two um, sittings that's great just make sure you 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 guys understood what these players did it was a fantastic game okay really nice work